Hey everybody, Scott Spritzer here, DocSports.com with our update for Tuesday, November 19th, 2019 free pick college football. We got back action going on Tuesday night, got a free pick in one of the games. That's coming up on this report, but first, if you have yet to take advantage and become a member over at DocSports.com, just want to give it a trial run, cool way to do it, man. All you got to do is click on the link below this video, get yourself set up for a free $60 account, and you can use those free 60 bucks on any of my daily packages or anybody else over at DocSports.com. Free $60 account can start by clicking on the link below the video. And of course, it comes with that Doc Sports guarantee. All right, last night, free pick winner here with the Kansas City Chiefs. We'll talk about that in a little bit when we recap this week's NFL. Uh, lost last night in basketball. And in fact, that Charlotte game was a real drag. They were tied at 55, getting nine, then fell apart. But we've had a great run in the NBA, 58 and 39, with our last 97 NBA plays. Uh, we had a 3-0 sweep this past weekend. We'll look to get right back on track on Tuesday. My NBA will be posted over at DocSports.com, 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific time, along with the NHL. We've taken the last two days off. There were only two games on Sunday, only two games on Monday. We didn't like any of those games, but we are in action on Tuesday, and my NHL will be posted at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific. Got to get a new winning streak started in college basketball, and uh, that's what we'll be looking to do on Tuesday. My college baskets released at DocSports.com. 1130 a.m. Eastern, 830 a.m. Pacific. NHL 43 and 26 run, NBA 58 and 39 run. We'll look to continue that in those two sports and get something going here in college basketball. All right, as far as uh, football is concerned, you know what we did this past weekend? Real good weekend. We're now 65% against the spread last four weeks by the time Thursday rolls around in college football and the NFL combined. And of course, my next card will be posted Thursday, 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific only at DocSport. About 90% done with the card, and we've got a couple of real nice college football plays for the weekend. We hit that eight unit on Sunday in the NFL. Appreciate those of you who jumped on board, and we've got a big play going this week, college football. Again, we'll talk more about that as we get closer to Thursday's post time. Let's do what we do every Tuesday, and that means we're going to review what happened in this week's NFL recap week 11 and look ahead to week 12. And again, these are in no particular order, just as I'm jotting them down and making notes throughout the day on Sunday. Jets beat the Washington Redskins 34 to 17, and boy, the Jets had six sacks. Constant pressure on Dwayne Haskins, and uh, this guy's not getting a fair shot uh, to get up to speed to NFL levels. And uh, listen, they were outgained big time. Jets, as far as yards per play, Jets had six yards per play. Skins only 3.7. Darnold four touchdown passes, only one pick. Uh, I like this kid, Jamal Adams. Not a kid, but you know what I mean. Uh, he's been tearing it up of late. Three more sacks on Sunday, really playing well. Uh, the Jet Jets are getting a field goal at home to the Raiders this upcoming weekend and the Skins, well, they're a three and a half point home dog to the Detroit Lions. Uh, moving on to the next game, we've got the Bills who thrashed Miami 37 to 20. How about Josh Allen all of a sudden? The Bills quarterback, three straight games with a rushing touchdown, but more important because we already knew about his legs and his feet. He had a big day passing the football, 21 for 33 and three touchdowns, no picks. That's five straight games now for Josh Allen without throwing an interception while throwing 12 touchdown passes at the same time. So he started to feel it. Uh, the Bills did have seven sacks in the game in the, in the win over Miami. Averaged about 6.3 yards per play to less than five per play for the Dolphins. The Bills had almost 170 yards rushing at nearly five yards per carry. Singletary big game, 70 yard, 75 yards, that is, on 15 carries. The Bills are laying four and a half at home to Denver. Miami getting 10 and a half at the Cleveland Browns. <clears throat> Falcons over Carolina break up Atlanta. Uh, they beat the Panthers 29 to three. That's two and zero the last two weeks for Atlanta, uh, knocking off New Orleans and Carolina on the road by a combined score of 55 to 12. Kyle Allen for Carolina has really hit the skids. Josh Allen we just mentioned, boy he's looking like he's getting it now. While Kyle Allen is really struggling, three touchdown passes for the Carolina quarterback and nine picks in his last four games. By the way, this Atlanta defense is playing much better. There's a reason for it. They didn't just stumble into it. Uh, their coach, Raheem Morris, one of their assistant coaches, ha had always been a defensive coach or better on defense. He's been a receivers coach. Well, they moved him back to the defense the last couple of games, and they're playing much better in that uh, secondary uh, for the Atlanta Falcons. Calvin Ridley, big game for Atlanta. I really like this guy. This guy's a number one receiver. When you got Ridley, you got Julio Jones, and you got Matt Ryan, a quarterback, you can do some damage. 
Uh, too bad this team got off to such a bad start. They also had a plus four turnover margin, which was the difference in the game. Uh, they only outgained Carolina by two yards, but again, played well defensively. Atlanta is at home to those Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They're laying four, four and a half is Atlanta. The Saints, well, uh, they are going to be laying nine and a half at home to these Carolina Panthers. All right, let's move on to uh, the Bengals losing to the Oakland Raiders 17 to 10, but a cover by the Cincinnati Bengals. And we've talked about that. We talked about it on v and Mad Dog Radio last week. Play on certain bad teams in weeks 10 through 13. And they've done quite well against the spread. This year, they're 2-0, winning this past weekend with the Cincinnati Bengals, winning the previous weekend with the Atlanta Falcons over the New Orleans Saints. But uh, the Raiders, you know, that's almost six yards per play to about four yards per play for the Bengals. Time of possession in Oakland's favor. Since he did run the heck out of the football, 170 yards on almost eight yards per carry. But listen, Jacobs, the young guy for Oakland, another big day, 112 yards, 23 carries, and the Raiders sacked Finley five times in the game. And Derek Carr not making those crazy mistakes like he did last year. By the way, the Bengals are going to be home to Pittsburgh this week. Steelers laying six and a half, seven. Oakland, a field goal favorite on the road over the New York Jets. A lot of people like the Jaguars this past weekend. We weren't involved in the game. Indy won the game 33-13. to uh, Nick Foles returned. Stats don't look bad. 33 for 47. 296 through the air. A couple of the touchdowns and a pick. But the Indy ground game stole the show in this one early and often. 264 yards on 7.3 yards per carry for the Colts. Williams and Mack, 27 carries. 225 yards. But a note to keep, Mack got injured for the Colts in this one. Uh, broken hand. He's going to be out there. Thursday and indefinitely. Last report I saw late Monday night was that he probably would be back before the end of the season. Of course, Jacoby Brissett uh, returned this past weekend and was able to do a game-managing job thanks to that running game. The Jags are getting a field goal at Tennessee. The Colts getting three and a half at Houston on Thursday night, again, without Mack and running back. All right, well, Minnesota falls behind 20 to nothing to the Denver Broncos and trailed 20 to seven after three quarters, and Denver blows another close one. Minnesota won 27-23. Of course, Denver did get the cover in that one, and uh, boy, it was because of Vikings bootlegs that really got things going in the passing game. And that was all keyed by Dalvin Cook, who got it going just enough in the late stages of the game to help Minnesota get back to this one. But Denver, they did have three shots at the end zone inside the Vikings 10 yard line in the closing seconds. Couldn't get the job done. Uh, listen, I'll say this much. Brandon Allen did not have a good game at all. 17 for 39, 240 yards, touchdown and a pick for the Denver quarterback. And how about Cousins? He just continues to play accurate, strong football. 29 for 35, 319 yards. Three touchdowns, no interceptions. Diggs, a big game at wide receiver. Uh, Minnesota's going to be on a bye this coming week. Denver getting four and a half at Buffalo. Uh, the Saints knocked off Tampa Bay 34 to 17. We had a great week in football, but we did lose with Tampa Bay. And, you know, Drew Brees had the big game, three touchdowns, no picks. But listen, I, I, I want to say I'm done with Jameis Winston, but there's always good spots for certain teams. But Winston blew another good spot. He had four more interceptions this past weekend. And again, the Bucs outgained New Orleans. Uh, and finished at five and a half yards per play, a little bit better than the Saints did. But again, it was Jameis Winston just unable to keep from throwing these picks, multiple picks, it seems like, game after game in key spots, and it cost his team. Saints go on to that 17-point win. Saints are laying nine and a half at home to Carolina. The Bucks getting four and a half at Atlanta. Uh, Cardinals' valiant effort again. Kyler Murray, much better than I thought he was going to be, especially this quick in his career. Uh, they did lose to San Francisco 36-26, but Arizona led 16-0 at one point, 16-10 at the half. Garoppolo, of course, a couple of picks in the red zone. That didn't help San Francisco. We've yet to see Garoppolo really put the onus of this offense on his shoulders when the running game is slowed down, and that's what Arizona tried to do. They slowed down that San Francisco running game, made Garoppolo beat them, and again, he, he threw 45 passes. That's too much for the San Francisco offense down the road. Four touchdowns, two picks. Coleman and Mostert for San Francisco. 27 yards rushing. That was it combined on 18 carries. And uh, boy, 20 penalties, 10 each for both teams. And they totaled between the two teams, 231 yards and penalties. San Francisco did average almost seven yards per play to about four and a half for the Cardinals. But uh, again, the Cardinals were able to outrush them big time. Cards are on their bye week. San Francisco laying three. This ought to be a fun one at home to Green Bay. That is Sunday night football.
Baltimore crushes the Houston Texans. Got to tell you, man, I am becoming a believer in Lamar Jackson, and uh, I'm more old school when it comes to some of my football, but this guy's just getting it done. Lamar, 17 for 24, 222 yards, four touchdowns, no picks. Uh, last two games now, Lamar Jackson, 32 for 41 through the air. Edwards, Ingram, Hill for Baltimore combined for 26 carries. Jackson only carried the ball nine times. I love that. Last couple of games, uh, John Harbaugh not calling as many running plays for Lamar Jackson. That's what they got to do to keep him healthy. Houston offensive line, absolute toast all day long. Uh, Baltimore, where they have 491 yards to 232 for Houston. Almost eight yards per play for the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, they're laying three, three and a half at the Rams this week. Baltimore is. The Texans, a three and a half point home favorite over India, as we mentioned earlier on Thursday night football. The Dallas Cowboys took on the Matthew Stafford-less Detroit Lions and beat them 35-27 after falling behind early. Michael Gallup with a huge game uh, for Dallas, the young wide receiver for the Cowboys. Best of his young career was this past Sunday. And I like Randall Cobb when he's busting loose over the middle uh, on receptions from Dak Prescott. By the way, Detroit did hold Amari Cooper in check, but it didn't matter with the other receivers that came to play for Dallas. And Dak went 29-46, 444 through the air, three touchdowns, no picks. How about Dallas? 500-plus yards in the games, over seven yards per play. Dallas getting six and a half at New England this week. The Lions laying three and a half at Washington. Boy, how bad are the skins. Patriots over the Eagles, 17 to 10. Another lackluster performance by the Pats offense. Defense was great. Philly led 10 nothing early on in the game, but the Pats defense turned the game around. They were down 10 to six. Two and a half minutes or thereabouts to go in the first half. They sacked Wentz. Uh, they forced a fumble near the Philly 20. It led to a New England field goal. And then the lone touchdown of the game for New England was an Edelman touchdown pass on an option to uh, Philip Dorsett, or Dorsett, I should say. Uh, Philly fourth in 10 at the New England 26 with about a minute to go. Drop pass in the end zone. It wouldn't have been an easy catch, but it should have been made. Uh, but instead, Philly loses to the Patriots by seven. Philly has no speed, a wide receiver. I mean, no speed at all and the offensive line is not run blocking well the Patriots had five sacks overall in the game but moving forward again the Eagles just don't have any speed at the wideout position and of course Sunday night football big game for us the Rams knock off the Bears 17 to 7 and we had that big play on the Rams Bears offense had their early chances and then everything just fell apart after the early going when they didn't take advantage they're just not that good they don't execute key important plays they only averaged about three and a half yards per play while the Rams gained about five and a half yards per play uh, Trubisky wasn't horrible, but he wasn't good. He's not going to lead a team to victory with the kind of numbers he put up on Sunday. Chase Daniel, by the way, he came in. He goes one for four. This was all about Todd Gurley. We mentioned this in our analysis over the weekend that we saw things we liked out of Gurley the previous week in Pittsburgh when he ran for more than six yards per carry, but got no carries in the fourth. Well, he had 97 yards on 25 carries. Not a bad two games back-to-back -back for Todd Gurley. Uh, the Bears are laying six at home to the Giants this week. The Rams, as we just mentioned on Monday Night Football, getting three to three and a half as we speak against the Baltimore Ravens. That'll be at home for the Rams, by the way. And of course, just completed Monday Night Football. Uh, we cashed the free pick here with Kansas City as they got the win and the cover over the Chargers, 24 to 17. Even covered the late number for those who waited around and had to pay the price, but still were able to get the victory. But Phillip Rivers, man, I don't know, man. It might be time for this guy to call it quits. You know, another season now where it's just getting worse and worse. And he's making costly mistakes. That's costing his team wins. I mean, they had a great shot to beat KC last night. His his mistakes were horrible. Two of his three interceptions basically uh, were unforced errors. I mean, just bad tosses. So I think the end is near for Phillip Rivers. All right, that is our weekly recap this time, week 11. Next week, we'll jump into week 12, of course. And don't forget all the football plays. College of Pro will be posted on Thursday for me at 6 p.m. Eastern time, 3 p.m. Pacific at DocSports.com. As far as Tuesday is concerned, free pick in just a moment. But we will have on Tuesday uh, my NBA at 1 p.m. Eastern at Doc Sports, 58 and 39 run 43 and 26 in the NHL that'll be at 1 p.m. Eastern post time at DocSports.com on Tuesday and we got to start a winning streak here in college basketball I do have a play 11:30 a.m. Eastern 8:30 a.m. Pacific uh, on Tuesday is the post time for that game all right <clears throat> excuse me quick analysis since these take a long time to get these recaps in 
We're going to back Northern Illinois at home over Eastern Michigan and search around because this number, which was, has been as high as seven when it originally opened in Las Vegas, all the way down to four in some spots. There's a lot of four and a half, some fives, but again, you can find four out there if you like the chalk in this one. And we're going to back Northern Illinois. We think the value is now on them at this price. Northern Illinois minus the points over Eastern Michigan Tuesday night college football. All right, listen, if you like the videos, click on that thumbs up button. Be sure to subscribe. I'm Scott Spritzer, DocSports.com. Let's put Tuesday in the win column right back here with a much shorter video Wednesday by 5 a.m. Eastern, 2 a.m. Pacific. Let's put Tuesday in the win column.